I know what's ahead. I could feel the future. From a producer of Top Gun Maverick and based on the award-winning novels by Isaac Asimov comes the next Apple TV Plus streaming event. Empire and our foundation headed for war. This could change everything. The foundation is a threat to my empire. We will destroy them. We are taking the planet! Foundation, the new season, streaming July 14th, only on Apple TV+. Hey folks, this is Vicki Connor. And Jamie Hale. And this week we are each on our summer vacations. So we are bringing you a rerun of our episode about climbing St. Helens. This is one of our favorites. It's a really good one. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, we'll be back uh, soon with some more fresh episodes. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by The Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we'll be breaking down my first volcanic summit climb, and that was <laughs> Mount St. Helens. Yes, Vicki, you did it. <laughs> you know, I remember you saying on your first podcast episode here that it was something that you'd really like to do. And as of recording this episode, you finished your climb less than 24 hours ago. Is that right? <laughs> and, and secondarily, how do you feel? How is your body? How is your mind? How are you feeling after that big event? Oh, my body is sore. And yes, I did complete it yesterday. So less than 24 hours ago, <laughs> I think I'm still half asleep. It seems like a whirlwind. Yesterday felt like it was five days put together, uh, but it, it was quite the adventure. And I am super proud of myself and my, my climbing partner, my good friend, Sydney, who completed it with me. Yeah, I can't believe we did it, but we did. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I, and we, I think we've talked to the podcast here before about um, exploring Mount St. Helens and some stuff to do um, on the kind of in the blast area side that does not involve summiting the mountain. But a lot of people, yourself and Sydney included, love to summit Mount St. Helens um, because it is apparently one of the easier mountains to climb, what with a bunch of it being blown up um, 40 <laughs> years ago. So I, I'm super curious about your experience. Um, so why don't we go ahead and dig into this? So um, Vicki, how did you get up there? What route did you take? Where did you go? Yeah, yeah. So Sydney and I... First off, we we woke up at 2 a.m. Uh, yesterday. <laughs> uh, woke up at 2 a.m. to leave my house by 2:30. It's about an hour and a half drive um, to the trailhead that we started at, which was um, Climber's Bivouac. I hope I pronounced that right, bivouac. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got there roughly about 4 a.m. And, uh, you know, got ready, did some stretching, started around 4.15. Starting at Climber's Bivouac, we went through Monitor Ridge. So that was the route that we took. There's an alternate route that people often do in the winter time um, that adds on like an additional two miles. And because there was so much snowfall this winter, that was up until like I think last month, maybe, that was the only route you could take. So we were glad that this route was open a little bit shorter. In total, it was about roughly under 10 miles. So basically, you start out and you're in the forest hiking for about two miles. And it's pretty much like every... You know, similar to a lot of hikes in the area. Uh, you've got great tree coverage. Honestly, we started in the dark, so we were wearing headlamps, couldn't see much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it was just, you know, a, a steady little incline, but nothing nothing too crazy. Um, and walking in the woods for two miles. We were probably one of three other groups that we saw in the very beginning there so early. It was not very crowded when we started. After that two miles in the woods, we got to the bouldering, or not bouldering section. This There were boulders there, but it was scrambling. Um, so you end 
the tree line and then get to some scrambling. It was still dark for us. So uh, yeah, that was about, I want to say like a mile and a half of scrambling. And that was pretty tough, I must say. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bet. Yes, yes. Uh, there was like one other group with us while we were doing some scrambling. So it was like nice to see some other people, especially I, I don't regularly climb in the dark before sunrise. So it was nice to see some other human <laughs> beings around us. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, the scrambling was, it was pretty difficult. You know, it honestly like any other scramble, but it was a lot. That's when you're really starting to pick up the elevation game through all of the scrambling there. Um, but it was kind of nice because there was an area where you could scramble, but there was also just like a sandy volcanic ash area that you could also walk up the trail. Um, so it was kind of like pick your poison in that section. Lots of scrambling, lots of scrambling. And then the third and last section before you get to the crater rim um, is climbing up volcanic ash, hiking through volcanic ash. And that on, <laughs> on the way up, that was definitely the hardest part because as you are climbing through the volcanic ash, every step that you take, like you sink down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you're trying mm -hmm. to just put your feet where you can see other people's footsteps who came before you and try not to completely <laughs> slide down. And at that point, it really, that was the mentally challenging point because you are just looking you can look straight up and see where you're going to go and see the tiny people that are up at the summit. And you're, my, my way of handling it was just looking kind of straight down and just powering through, you know, taking a few <laughs> steps, taking a break, letting yourself breathe, take a few more steps, stretch your legs out. And uh, <laughs> at some point you make it to the top and you're at the crater rim. Um, so that's kind of the breakdown of each of the three sections that St. Helens Summit Climb is kind of known for. So you go through all of that, waking up early, driving up there, you do the climb and you're at the crater rim. Tell us what that experience was like. What did it look like up there? What did it feel like being at that spot? Yeah, we, we lucked out because it was such, such a beautiful day. When we started, even at 4 a.m., like the temperature was great. It was a little chilly. So once you start really moving your body, it, you weren't overheated or anything. And once we got to the top or even in the scrambling section, the sun starts to rise and you get a glimpse of just this the, the beautiful colors at one point. We look over and the the sky behind us is just this beautiful pastel pink and blue and you're like oh, okay this is there's this is worth it this is great the sky is so beautiful and then once you got to the top um when the sun had risen it was so clear uh you know just only a few clouds in the sky and you turn around and you can see mount hood and rainier and also, once you get to the crater rim, you look down and see that the, <laughs> the crater is smoking. And it was kind of an eerie feeling to see that <laughs> because it's just like this history boiling down in the crater. <laughs> you have a great lookout um, if you're lucky enough to have a clear day like we did. Hmm. God, that sounds so nice. So beautiful. Yeah. I've always been curious to, you know, Climbing volcanoes is a very specific kind of activity. I mean, there's the physical exertion, like you said. Um, there's sort of that awe of being up there in that beautiful place. But I mean, you look at Mount St. Helens, and this is this is a, a volcano that erupted very violently very recently. We're yeah. talking, you know, what, 42 years ago. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm I'm curious if you had any sense of what that experience was like of of being on this like active. Yeah, you know, recently erupted volcano. What was that like yeah. energetically like for you? <laughs> I felt like every little noise that I heard, I was, <laughs> I'm the paranoid person that's like, oh no, <laughs> there's going to be an eruption. <laughs> A silly thought, but you know, it's in the back of my mind that this was not that long ago that it happened. 
you know, climbing a volcano and being on <laughs> these like lava rocks as you're doing it, it's so different from pretty much anything else that I've done. This is my first time climbing a volcano. And especially during the scrambling parts, you're on all fours kind of just going over this volcanic rock. Um, and also on the ashy part, it's just such a different climbing experience than anything that I've had before. Aside from me being super paranoid, nothing was like super eerie or anything like that. But I will say that the energy was intense. I think it takes it up another level. Obviously, you're exerting a lot of effort as you're scrambling. And then when you remember that you are scrambling over volcanic rock, <laughs> you, there's a point in time where you think to yourself, I am on this active volcano. I have not experienced anything like this in my life. It's pretty surreal. Wow. It sounds really humbling as well to kind of be uh, on this, this you know, this force of nature um, that is so enormous and so destructive to, to be just kind of scrambling up its up its side, you know, it seems really like a humbling experience to me. Yeah, especially those parts when I was talking about, you know, you're basically going straight up on the volcanic ash and you look up and you see how tiny the people are who are at the summit. It, it really puts in pers into perspective um, how how small you are, but how mighty you can be. And you, you too can summit a volcano. I feel like everyone that we passed, uh, everyone who we saw at the summit was in incredibly good spirits. Uh, the energy was great there. And um, a lot of other groups of women climbers, which was awesome mm. to see. Um, <laughs> at the top, I think it was all women except for one couple. And you know, we're just sitting there eating our sandwiches at the top, finally relaxing our legs. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was kind of like a sense of camaraderie once once you're there mm. and just hanging out with other people who just did this crazy feat. Wow. Well, that sounds just like such a special and incredible experience. I'm really happy for you and for um, your friend, Sydney, for making it up there and, and for, for checking, the, uh, checking the thing off the bucket list. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was, uh, oh man, I think I'm still trying to process it right now. <laughs> Just like 24 hours ago. Um, yeah, my, my legs are very sore. Uh, definitely will continue to do some stretching today and uh, continue to look through all the photos that we got because, wow, I... We'll not be forgetting this anytime soon. <laughs> well, we want to talk a little bit more with you, Vicki, um, about preparing for that big hike up to Mount St. Helens um, and all that you did to get ready for that. Um, but first, before we get there, we're going to take just a quick break. All right, folks, we are back talking with Vicky about climbing Mount St. Helens, which she did a mere less than 24 hours ago. Vicky, you just gave us the lowdown on your whole trip up there. But what I'm really curious about is what went into the process of planning this. Obviously, it's a pretty big excursion. I imagine that there was definitely some prep work ahead of time. Yes, 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 yes. There definitely was. So first and foremost... Uh, if you're interested in climbing Mount St. Helens, you do have to get a permit in order to do that. So permits to climb during this time of the year are released um, through recreation.gov website where you can secure it. Basically, all the permits for each month are released on the 1st of the previous month. So for me, it meant going online July 1st. I believe it was like 10 a.m. to secure that climbing permit. And it is definitely something where people rush to go online and get that permit. <laughs> so, sure. you know, look online, see uh, exactly what time it goes on sale and log on accordingly because people immediately go for those weekend slots. Um, and, you know, in a matter of seconds, 
they're gone. <laughs> so uh, by the time I logged in, I think it was like an hour or so after they had gone on sale, but got that nice Tuesday slot, which was great because it wasn't overly crowded or anything. For the two of us, so two permits, it came out to a total of $36. Um, and yeah, once you have that, you're pretty much good to go and you sign in at the trailhead with that permit. But a lot of physical planning goes into the climb as well. So I was just uh, preparing for this climb by doing a lot of day hikes with a lot of elevation gain and trying to find ones that had a little bit of scrambling involved as well. Although nothing came close to what I actually did. Uh, I think <laughs> some of these day hikes where you're really just going, feels like you're going straight up, straight up a, a big hill. Uh, that is what I was looking for. And I think that did end up helping quite a bit. Was there any kind of like mental preparation you went for as well, in addition to just getting your body ready? Yes, a lot of mental preparation for me. You know, it might differ for everyone. For me, I just think like this is going to be one of the hardest things you've ever done. I, I think that, that is what I kind of hype myself up to, to know that like you can't just slack off. This is going to be something that's really hard and acknowledging that up until you're actually doing it was key for me. But also knowing that I'm capable of doing it and I've done hikes with, not harder, but greater elevation gain before. And so I've done that, I'm capable, I can do it mentality is also something that was key for me. That was something that also kind of just powered me through while I was actually climbing. Mentally preparing also meant packing accordingly. So I do have some key tips of what you should be putting in your bag, uh, also what you should be wearing, and all of that good stuff. Awesome. Well, lay them on us. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So the biggest thing I could not recommend enough is getting a pair of gloves. And I just got <laughs> a pair of gardening gloves from Fred Meyer for like six bucks. And I will tell you that helped in all of the scrambling sections so, so much. <laughs> Having that grip on the gloves and protecting yourself from sharp rock, volcanic rock, that uh, best $6 I've spent in a long time. Um, I also went, I don't actually have my own trekking poles, so I rented a pair of trekking poles from Next Adventure. That was great because it was only eight bucks. Also, packing a lot of water. Uh, mm -hmm. You will see that recommendation pretty much on all of the reviews. I think I had about four and a half liters of water. I didn't end up drinking all of it, but since we started so early and in the dark, you know, it wasn't very hot to begin with, but oh man, pack a lot of water. <laughs> You'll be exerting a lot of energy. You need to hydrate and also hydrating beforehand as always is a must. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, packing the appropriate food. You need to have a lot of snacks. You are burning a lot of calories while you are doing this. So you're exerting a lot of energy. Um, have your snacks of choice. I packed a lunch to eat at the top in order to power me down, <laughs> down the hill, which was pretty much harder for me personally than going up because of my knees. So <laughs> uh, having, having some food in your stomach so you don't get hangry on the way down which is also something I was a little <laughs> guilty of. Maybe I should have packed a bigger lunch for the top. Um, and then uh, obviously wearing sunscreen, uh, packing uh, other sun protection, sunglasses, a hat, uh, all that good stuff is great. Um, and then I will say other thing, highly recommend some gaiters to put over your shoes. That was something that I wasn't really sure about. And then it was a last minute purchase the night before that I started the climb. And I'm glad because there's, there's a ton of stuff that can get in your shoes and just having that extra covering uh, that goes over the top of the shoe and the back will help you out. And uh, not having that annoying little pain of a rock inside your shoe is great to have on something like this. And so for folks who don't understand what gators are, maybe haven't heard that term before, um, what exactly are gators? Gators 
can be used for a number of things. Uh, trail runners will have them. They're essentially like a cloth that fits over either your boot or your shoe um, and secures to the bottom of it. So basically you have this lining going over where your ankle meets your shoe and it prevents any small pieces of rock or sand, what have you. Um, if you're getting like a winter pair of gaiters, it helps prevent any moisture from getting in to your feet. Um, if you have like waterproof ones, have more heavy duty ones for the winter time. I imagine with all of that sort of crumbly volcanic rock and ash and all that stuff in the mountain that must have really come in handy. Yes, it did. It did. I know um, my friend Sydney did not have a pair and she was saying that it would have been helpful. And, you know, at the end of the day, I still had some tiny, tiny sand, but, or volcanic ash <laughs> in my shoe. But, <laughs> you know, I imagine it would have been more without it. Well, so you, you covered kind of the, the prep you had to get there, the stuff you brought with you. You know, I'm curious now that you're 24 hours out, I know it might be a little early for this question, but do you have any, any sort of major takeaways from your experience that you're sitting with? Oh, man, my major takeaways are that if you have bad knees, <laughs> the descent is going <laughs> to be painful. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I think I really think the descent was the hardest part. Um, for me personally, that was, oh, man, it was a lot. Uh, I have my right knee is I toured the ACL of my right knee like 10 years ago. So anything with a big descent will be a little bit difficult. But that's the pessimistic side of me. The optimistic side is that <laughs> the views were amazing. It feels like such a personal accomplishment and something that's really, really empowering. But it might be a little bit before I climb another mountain like that. <laughs> I need to rest and recover after this one. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you, I think to wrap things up, I mean, you've done your first volcanic ascent. Do you have another one um, in mind for the future? That is something I'm considering, maybe, you know, maybe next year. I need like a full year to <laughs> recuperate after this. Um, but I am thinking maybe South Sister, perhaps. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, that that's uh, another exciting adventure, and I'm so looking forward to hearing more about uh, your preparation and all of the planning that might go into that kind of trip. Um, man, Vicky, this, this sounds like such a cool adventure. I'm so glad you took the time to to do it and to come and share it with people here. Yeah, Jamie, I'm I'm glad I survived it. <laughs> I think I really like <laughs> me and Sydney really built it up in our heads quite a bit, and uh, you know. Afterwards, you go treat yourself to a nice big shave ice somewhere and cool off and just there you go. lay down. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I will continue to recover all day today. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, I think that'll do it for us here today. Folks, until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast and our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and are interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale and Andrew Thien. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen. <laughs>